Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry for, for being late. I believe we had very good debates today. And generally, to bring the issue about conflicts in Europe to the attention of the Security Council has been supported by everyone. Because uh, now we have fundamentally a different situation than, for example, in the 90s. We have now Russia waging uh, aggression against Ukraine and waging hybrid war against uh, Europe. We have a lack of effective multilateral instruments in Europe. We were discussing today the necessity for the different international organizations to interact, to cooperate, and I mean here, of course, the European Union, the OSCE, and NATO, everyone who can contribute, who can deliver. We have fundamentally different situation in the sense of uh, unconventional warfare and uh, hybrid threats now used to uh, further destabilize situation in the zones of conflicts and uh, around them. We all understand that uh, for Russia it's not about Donbas. You know, they don't care about Donbas, but they do care about destabilizing uh, Ukraine is European and democratic country. So I believe that today's debate gave us also a unique opportunity to come up with a number of very concrete proposals on how to more effectively engage the United Nations system, on how to more actively engage the Secretary General and uh, also to approach much needed uh, United Nations reform, including the Security Council reform, because uh, I said today that the fact that Russia as an aggressor sitting in the Security Council as P5 member and misusing the veto right is a fundamental challenge to the whole uh, United, uh, United Nations system. So I personally believe it was a very good debate, embracing many important issues, embracing different kind of uh, uh, points of uh, instability. And on the basis of today's discussion, we have in mind to discuss very comprehensive uh, draft of uh, the presidency conclusions. Somehow to get together what could be done uh, with, uh, with the help of uh, our common efforts. So in this sense, uh, I believe uh, it was important. And uh, we are very happy that uh, we were supported in our attempts to have uh, good discussions today. I would like, uh, before, uh, before I, of course, uh, enter in answering any kind of questions from you, simply to get your attention to one statement by the representative of, uh, of the Russian Federation. And, uh, of course, uh, it's about uh, Donbas, about uh, Russian aggression going on in Donbas. But uh, just on Saturday, the president of Russia signed a special decree allowing for the illegal documents issued by illegal entities to be recognized in Russia. Of course, uh, it fully contradicts uh, the logic of Minsk. It's about de facto recognizing uh, this illegal entity supported by the Russians. But today he also mentioned 
given this analogy, drawing this analogy, the examples of uh, Taiwan or of the Northern Cyprus, and it shows somehow the logic uh, Russia has been following uh, in, uh, in this uh, exercise. So on, all in all, uh, I believe uh, these discussions uh, were, were very useful today. Minister, can I ask you about the uh, uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov in Moscow complained that Ukraine had blocked a presidential statement on the passing of Vitaly Churkin. Could I get your reaction to that? Why did uh, Ukraine consider that this was not appropriate? And also, during the tribute to Vitaly Churkin, Ukraine I, was the only Security Council member that did not speak. Uh, can you tell us why? Actually, our representative to the United Nations, Mr. Yelchenko, expressed his condolences and uh, also pronounced uh, the minute of silence. And of course, uh, you know, we would like to express our condolences to his family and to his relatives, to him as a, as a human being. But we don't believe that the presidential statement uh, comparing to the press statement which has been used with is an appropriate way here. And of course, uh, we all know that we had a different idea how to serve uh, our country, our people and the way how, how to serve both of them. So uh, we have a kind of proverb in Ukrainian. We normally say something positive uh, about uh, someone who passed away or nothing. But uh, it was not uh, our today's approach. And of course, uh, in the sense, uh, it was, uh, you know, his, uh, way or how to represent Russia. And uh, as I've said, uh, we have fundamental difference. And I mean fundamental difference in the way of political position and in the way how he presented this position. But uh, it, uh, it does not uh, put us away from uh, our point of, uh, of expressing human condolences. Of course, it's about, it's about that. Can you just clarify, please, why not a presidential statement? Because we issued real, you know, relevant press statement. It was factual statement. It was also the position of the Security Council, somehow saying about uh, what happened and uh, about our common way how, how to uh, provide our reaction. Uh, Mr. Foreign Minister, uh, thank you. Uh, with this Security Council meeting, what, uh, what does it mean for Ukraine? I mean, what do you want to achieve? And also with a new administration in Washington that is asking uh, Russian Federation to return Crimea to Ukraine, uh, what are you aim, uh, trying to aim uh, to achieve here? Uh, look, it's, it's a good point. Because we believe we, we will uh, reach a kind of special added value in drafting and discussing our presidential conclusions on the basis how we see different conflicts in Europe. And uh, as I have said, the fundamental difference from the time, let's say, 20 years ago is that we don't have now effective multilateral system because Russia has been trying to undermine it. Let's uh, recall, for example, conventional force treaty in Europe. You know, let's recall what, is go what has been going on with the uh, capabilities and effectiveness uh, of the OSCE and uh, the simple point about the Budapest Memorandum. So Russia basically broke any kind of legally binding and politically binding commitment. So now we need to understand 
how would you get together, and I mean literally get together, different organizations who could be effective on European space in the sense of effectively tackling conflicts and preventing further destabilization. So we have a number of practical ideas in mind. For example, for Ukraine, uh, just to give you one example, uh, we have been proposing for some time more effective engagement of the United Nations in the sense of setting up special United Nations office and covering more different spheres. So we believe uh, that today's discussion should trigger a number of important points in the sense of conclusions which could be and should be used by all of us. Article 99, you, you mentioned that the, Secretary, the former Secretary General didn't invoke it in 2008 and 2014. Do you think that the current one will do so, and what will you be asking him this afternoon when you meet him? Look, <laughs> we, we all understand that it should have been done timely in 2008 and uh, in 2014. Now I mention it not to remind <laughs> the current Secretary General, but simply to remind of lost opportunities. I believe it was, uh, it was a failed opportunity, so we need to address it in the future. It's not about uh, trying to urge the Secretary General to do it now, as yes, you understand and we understand the current situation. But for me, it's an important point. And look, on the basis of what I've said, we need to more effectively use different kind of opportunities within the United Nations system. I mentioned some of them, including Security Council reform, including different, uh, different ideas, but we have uh, a number of other ideas in mind. And my idea, why I addressed in my statement a number of practical proposals, we don't need a kind of uh, talking shop simply uh, saying, uh, you know, the known things and producing statements. We need to discuss a number of viable and effective proposals, and this is exactly what we are going to do. Mr. Foreign Minister, over the weekend, the Vice President said that uh, the U.S. would hold uh, Russia accountable over the UN. What kind of form would you want this accountability to take? Would you, uh, would you hope for further action at the UN Security Council or would you prefer this to be stronger accountability? Uh, look, it's, it's very simple. It's about uh, solidarity with Ukraine. And of course, uh, it's about uh, political pressure. It's about sanctions, but it's about comprehensive attempt. And as you know, the president of Ukraine had a very good meeting on Saturday in Munich with the vice president. Uh, many issues uh, have been discussed uh, in connection with what, what is going on uh, in and around Donbass uh, and the whole uh, connection to the Russian aggression there, but also issues uh, regarding Crimea. And I believe it should be a very clear line, and you've actually heard this very clear line from the U.S. representative today. But again, it's about uh, policy coordination, but it's about bold and tangible actions. You just mentioned sanctions. Are you going to ask uh, the U.N. to impose sanctions on Russia over continued hostilities in the Ukraine? Look, but we all understand and I've mentioned it today, that Russia sits in the Security Council. And without Security Council reform, it's unfortunately not possible to effectively counter Russian aggression. This situation, as I've said on many occasions, is somehow schizophrenic. We have aggressor, SP5 member, sitting in the Security Council and blocking a number of attempts to proceed effectively. I recall very well uh, how we uh, were trying to get the International Tribunal on the Malaysian airplane MH17. And it was, and uh, it, look, it was very emotional point for myself because uh, it's, it's not about uh, addressing Russia as a state sponsoring terrorism. It's another level, what we've been doing now addressing the International Court of Justice. But it's about bringing justice to people who, uh, who were killed in this terrorist act. And it's just one example. So we need to uh, find 
more effective ways how to address this issue. And I somehow focused also in my statement to, uh, to, to a number of good possibilities, but it was not in any way a kind of exhaustive list. Are you going to push for implementation? Uh, you mentioned this in your remarks, implementation of the provision in the Charter that would call for a party to the conflict, in this case Russia, uh, to abstain and, and not exercise its veto power? It's not been enforced, as you've said. Uh, is there an opportunity now with the new Trump administration to push for uh, implementation? But uh, look, uh, I've, been, uh, I've been mentioning it uh, for almost three years now. It's one of the points uh, we definitely need to address because unfortunately we don't have an effective practical way how to evoke uh, this, uh, this legal possibility. This possibility is there, but unfortunately it could not be used. And because of that, we need to kind of understand how to start effectively using this possibility. And I believe it would unblock a number of practical and very effective actions on countering aggressions and countering those who keep instigating conflicts. Thanks a lot again. It was my pleasure.